Hi, my name is Linda Callahan, and I'm a physiotherapist. And my name is Antoinette Krakowski. I'm an occupational therapist. And we're here to get you ready for your knee replacement. Some of the things we're going to review are some basic facts about the surgery and what you should expect. I'm going to show you some exercises that you should start today and continue before and after your surgery. We're going to review the equipment you need to arrange for after your surgery. We're going to talk about how to manage your everyday activities, how to plan for your discharge home, and how to arrange for wheel trans. The knee is called a hinge joint, which allows you the knee to bend and straighten. It is made up of the thigh bone, which is the femur, the kneecap, the patella, and the large shin bone, which is the tibia. Over time, the knee may wear out. It can be a result of the jobs that we do, the sports that we play, our genetic makeup, the weight that we carry. We have pain, we have trouble walking. During your surgery, they are going to take off the bottom of your femur, the thigh bone, the top of the tibia, your shin bone, and clean up the back of your kneecap. Your new knee will include a new bottom of the femur made of metal, a plastic liner, a metal stem in the tibia. Most often they use the combination of metal, plastic and metal as there's very little friction so that movement will come easier. The time before your surgery is the best time for you to try and quit or cut down on your smoking. The hospital has a partnership with the Canadian Orthopedic Foundation, Canadian Anesthesiologist Foundation, and the Smokers Helpline. You can improve your odds by stopping smoking or cutting down your smoking. If you quit, there is less chance of a wound infection, less chance of a chest infection such as pneumonia, and less chance that you'll need to have your surgery revised later. Smokers' bones are not quite as strong as non-smokers' bones, and they take longer to heal. Smokers are more likely to get a wound infection because of the decreased circulation. We can help. The hospital has a smoker's helpline as well as cessation counseling that's available. If you are interested in any of these programs, the information is available in the resource section of the website. You will attend a pre-admission visit sometime in the three weeks before your surgery. It is a long visit, usually three to four hours. Bring a snack. You will see a lot of different people. Usually the nurse will take your weight, height, and other vital signs. She will set the groundwork for the assessment. The doctor that you will see is different than your bone doctor. They are an internist. They look at the bigger picture to make sure you're ready for your surgery. You will meet the anesthesiologist. He is the doctor who will go over the options for putting you to sleep. He also works with the pain nurse to manage your pain after your surgery. The pharmacist will need to know what medicines you take, also what vitamins you take, and any herbal supplements that you take. The lab technician will take some blood and do an ECG of your heart. Before you finish, you will meet the therapist. They will complete an assessment that helps the team determine where you will go after your surgery. 90% of people go home following their surgery. A few will need to go to a rehab hospital after their surgery. The therapist will review the information in the booklet, make sure you have the information regarding the equipment needed, and answer any questions you may have about your surgery. Your stay in the hospital varies from patient to patient depending on who your surgeon is as, and how you are progressing. Length of stay varies from zero to two days. If the plan is for you to go home on day zero, which means the same day that you are having your operation, you will practice your walking with your walker, try walking on the stairs with a cane if you have stairs at home, review your precautions, and review your exercises. If you are not going home and your surgery is done early though, the team will, get you, will try to get you sitting in a chair and try a short walk on the same day as your surgery. Otherwise, on day number one, the team will teach you about managing your pain, getting you up walking with the walker, practice the stairs, practice your exercises, review your precautions, review how to get dressed with the dressing aids, how to get in and out of the bathtub. It is important to remember that the first step, step to recovery is managing your pain. The better your pain is managed, the more you will want to do. 
Managing your pain will help to improve your energy level and your appetite. When you are leaving the hospital, you will get a prescription for Tylenol and an opioid, which is a stronger pain medicine. Take the stronger pain medicine before your exercises, and most people find it helpful to take at nighttime. Take the Tylenol to keep you comfortable when you're resting, sitting in a chair, or lying down. The stronger pain medicine may constipate you, make it difficult for you to go to the washroom. So drink lots of water and eat foods with lots of fiber, such as prunes, berries, or beans. When packing for the hospital, remember that you are only here for a short time. Bring your walker, supportive shoes, athletic sandals, or slippers. Do not bring your tightest pair of shoes as your feet may swell following your surgery. You will also need comfortable clothing, loose pajamas, shorts and a t-shirt, or a tracksuit. After you leave the hospital, you are to continue doing your exercises three times per day. Your first physiotherapy appointment should be five to seven days after your surgery. This should be arranged before your surgery. If you are having your outpatient therapy at St. Joe's, the staff on the surgery floor will give you an appointment card as a reminder of the date. Your outpatient physiotherapist will progress your exercises and your walking. Together you will develop a plan of care for your recovery. Antoinette will now go over your precautions following your surgery. After your knee surgery, keep your incision dry and clean and avoid kneeling until you are comfortable. There is equipment that you will need to buy, rent or borrow to help you manage things at home. One of the most important pieces of equipment is a two-wheeled walker. It must be adjusted to your height and brought to the hospital on the day of your surgery. Put your name on it so that it does not get lost and give it to a family member or friend to hold on to until you get out of surgery. Also, you'll need a cane. It is the same height as your walker. You will be using a cane on the stairs and as you get better, you will, you will be going from a walker to a cane for walking. If you have a standard height toilet, you will need a raised toilet seat. The seat comes with or without arms. The arms are helpful because they allow you to push off of the seat, but you need to have at least 26 inches width as clearance. For bathing, a transfer bench makes it easy to get into and out of the tub safe, safely, and you can sit for your shower. The handles may be on the left or right side. Smaller bathrooms or walk-in showers may need a bath seat. You should get your equipment and set up your home before surgery. There are also assistive devices that you can buy to help you at home. To help you manage at home, you can purchase different types of assistive devices after your knee replacement. We encourage you to move your knee. We want you to bend it, we want you to straighten. But if you have problems doing things at home, you can purchase a long-handled reacher. This will help you pick things up from up high or from the floor. Then there is the long-handled shoehorn to help you put your shoes on. A long-handled brush will help you with washing not only your back but your feet. And then there is the sock aid. So with the sock aid, you would get your sock, put it on the plastic material here, pull it up, put it on the ground, put your foot in and pull up. Again, it is very important to organize your equipment before your surgery. In the education package that we have sent you, 
We have also included a link to the resources where you will find a list of local vendors where you can buy or rent equipment. Getting into and out of a car may be challenging. If a car is too low, you will need a cushion to raise the height of the seat. If it is too high, the car can be pulled up to a curb so that you are a little higher. Move the front seat all the way back so that you have room for your legs or sit in the back. Go in with your bottom first, then slide across and then bring your legs in. A plastic garbage bag on the seat may make sliding in easier. If you don't have anyone that can help you get to your appointments, you can apply to Wheeltrans. There is a section of the application that needs to be filled out by a healthcare professional. So make sure you start this process as soon as possible. If you live outside of Toronto, you need to contact the special need transit services in your area. In the education package we have sent you, if you go back to the link in the resource section, we have included further information about Wheeltrans, as well as other contacts for driving you to your appointments. To get ready for your surgery, know who is going to take you home after surgery, get help for the heavy things that you need to have done around the house, and find someone that will help you with your exercises and get your house ready by getting rid of loose rugs and clear your clutter from stairways and floors. Remember, you're going to be using a walker to get around your home. It's also a good idea to get food ready so that when you come out of the hospital, you will have some prepared meals so that your focus will be on rest and doing your exercises. If you need groceries delivered, we have also sent you information in the education package about home grocery delivery services. You have a big part in getting better after your surgery. We'd like you to start doing your exercises, read the patient education material, get your house ready, get your equipment before surgery. Purchase two antibacterial sponges. The nurse in pre-admit will talk to you about the sponges and they're used to help clean the site of your surgery. Arrange for your transportation and get someone to help you at home after surgery. If you need an interpreter, Arrange for someone to come along to your appointments with you or ask for an interpreter to be available at the hospital for you. Some commonly asked questions are, how long will my new knee last? Approximately 20 years. And what is my new knee made of? The metal portions are titanium or cobalt chromium based alloys. The plastic parts are polyethylene. And will I beep at the airport? Most likely. Surgeons often give you a card to show you at the airport security. When can I drive? Two to four weeks after surgery on your left knee four to six weeks after surgery on your right knee. And this is according to the Canadian Medical Association. You should not be on heavy pain medicine and you should have good movement of your knee. This is the link that you can go to for the resources. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact Linda or myself at the following telephone numbers or emails. 
good luck with your surgery.